Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the preview event for Bloombero. Today we're taking a look at a black green turtle landfall deck featuring the new green shell, a 5 mana 4 6 with reach. Says as long as we control 10 or more lands, creatures we control get plus 2 plus 2, so that's a nice goal to aim for. And whenever the green shell or another creature with toughness greater than its power enters under our control, we get to look at the top card of our library. If it's a land card, we can put it on the battlefield tapped. If not, we can still put it in hand. So it still draws a card when it enters, basically. And then we've got some other high toughness creatures to synergize with our green shell, which will then also help put additional lands on the battlefield, enabling our other landfall synergies. And one of those is the Iridescent Vine Lasher, a 1 mana 1 2, has offspring for 2 mana, so we can make an additional 1 1 version of it. And then landfall deals 1 damage to target opponent. And then by dealing damage with a Vine Lasher, we're also committing a crime, as it turns out, which is awesome alongside the Free Stride or Lookout saying whenever we commit a crime we get to look at the top five cards of our library to find a land and put it on the battlefield tapped. So then the lookout can put an additional land in play, once again triggering the Vine Lasher, dealing more damage. Now this is limited to once per turn so we can't completely go off but still very synergistic. Plus we now also get to play with Fabled Passage which has been reprinted in standard so that's another way to enable a landfall twice. Can also maybe save Fabled Passage to use it in the opponent's turn so we can once again deal damage with the Vine Lasher commit a crime and since it's the opponent's turn now we can trigger it once again so that's also very synergistic and then Nissa is also great here as a way to generate additional mana with landfall and if we can trigger Nissa twice in one turn we can find an additional elf or elemental which means an extra Nissa or more likely or green shell which is also an elemental so those have excellent synergy and then we have two copies of Bristly Bill as our final landfall payoff giving us additional plus one plus one counters and then the Armored Scrap Gorger can also help us ramp while also potentially committing crimes. If we exile cards from the opponent's graveyard, we can also commit a crime maybe even during the opponent's turn to enable the lookout, which is also great if we can enable that twice per turn cycle. And then rounding out the deck, we've got Preacher as a high toughness creature to trigger our green shell to maybe find additional cards. Also just a good mid-range card to have. And then we've got some spot removal with four copies of cut down and four copies of go for the throat. More ways to commit crimes as well with a lookout. And then the deep cavern bat to disrupt the opponent's hand can also commit a crime. And then last but not least we've got the full set of blossoming tortoise as another turtle. When it enters or attacks we get to mill three cards and then return a land card from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Including lands that were already in the graveyard. So once again excellent with fabled passage which naturally ends up in the graveyard. And then can also maybe help enable landfall several times and then activated abilities get a one mana discount quite relevant with our creature lands as well as with a demolition field getting a one mana discount and then land creatures also get plus one plus one so we can now activate our restless cottage for just three mana instead of four and have a five five that can attack and make food tokens if cottage attacks it also counts as committing a crime if we target the opponent's cards in graveyard so that can also synergize with a lookout and both lookout and tortoise are also excellent ways to help find the cottage in the first place so that gives us another decent win condition especially against control if there's a few board wipes happening we can still rely on our creature lanes and then I'm also running two copies of Cavern of Souls, naming Turtle to make our top end threats uncounterable. As we said, Demolition Field, also a way to commit crimes during the opponent's turn to enable the lookout. And then Fabled Passage, very important. So we do want to have lots of basics to search up. I've got two forests and six swamps, since we do want black mana on turn one sometimes to cast Cut Down and Vine Lasher. So I'm prioritizing those. And then a Lander Waste as another land that enters untapped. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little slow here with no one or two mana play. Especially on the draw, I don't think we can keep. Alright, still not great, but I guess we'll try this. It's got the same problem, but uh, doesn't look like it's going to get any better. So, what do I keep? Could maybe bottom a land since we're likely to draw another. Opponent Monoret so far. And a Gecko, so it is a Lizard deck. And yeah, that's a nice start. Can have a look with our bait. 
take their last card, although Mentor can likely find more action. Could also trade, but then they get the Flamecaller back, which can then let them attack into our 3-3s. Three Opponent finding a land Vine Lasher. At least they cannot play the Vine Lasher here. Although they have another Gecko, and then they can discard and draw. So a 3-3 blocks reasonably well. Can make it a lookout to next turn commit a crime. And then the back can keep attacking since we're not jumping. Upside of Nissa first is that if we find a land for Tortoise, I can enable landfall twice and still cut down. So maybe that was still slightly better. Mentor triggers, finds a land and boss, which they can't quite play. Alright, we did find a land. So now I could go Nissa, play a land, make black to take out the Mentor. Commit a crime, which triggers a lookout to find another land, hopefully, which triggers Nissa again. And a Fabled Passage will do nicely. And we've got a back of Nissa. Alright, that was a nice turnaround. And then Bat can attack. Fine to trade Nissa now that we have a backup. Opponent discards a second Gev. Another Gecko. Enters with a plus one counter. They can pump the Hired Claw as well. Or they can go digging. Or even give the uh, Gecko haste here with the village. So they've got a lot of options. We just want to trade as much as possible. Keep our life total high. Doesn't look like I have more ways to commit crimes, so may as well trade the lookout. Okay. Yeah, I'll take these trades. And another green shell. So if I were to play Nissa and fetch, I can't do anything else. So... We'll just play the green shell then. Try and curve those into each other. Tordos can get back Fabled Passage at the very least. We will go for the throat, so they get a free attack. We're at 7. Preacher can maybe gain some life back as well. So, yeah, maybe Nissan to Preachers to play here. And then next turn with Tortoise getting back a fetch land. It does enter tapped, so I don't get to immediately sacrifice it to enable Nissa twice. The alternative is play another green shell. Hope they don't have another go for the throat, pretty much. I like double spelling. And then a uh, Preacher can help gain more life if needed. Alright, there's the boss. Can start pumping their creatures as well. They need to pump the Gecko twice in order to attack past Preacher. And then I might just trade for Nissa. Alright, Vine Lasher is not bad. So now I could go Green Shell into Vine Lasher to trigger it once again. And we could name Turtle. And find another Vine Lasher. 
All right, can we attack with Preacher to make a 1-1? One -one? Yeah, I think so. Bones at 10. And now we wouldn't mind drawing another Fabled Passage with all these Vine Lashers available. Tordos can get one back. So at the very least, play this with Offspring, play Tordos, get back Fabled Passage. I'm missing the new Capenna fetch lands that sacrifice themselves right away. Although now a Lookout's not bad either. Although I cannot enable it without a land. Could go Lookout into Tordos. And that will enable Vine Lasher commit a crime. Sure. And then we'll have Fabled Passage in play for the following turn. And get another Fabled Passage. Demolition feels also reasonable to blow up the village. And this can attack. And then next turn we should pretty much wrap it up. Um, let's get in with Preacher, which triggers both modes. And now we've got an extra land to pump the team with Green Shell. Could also play it now, and then still play a Vine Lasher. Sure. So I need to name uh, a Lizard. Okay, two more triggers. Bones at two. And our team is enormous. Got some nice life linkers as well. So just sacrificing Fabled Passage will do it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a Keeper. Turn to likely start with a Scrap Gorger. Can potentially help ramp out some of our four drops, like Blossoming Tortoise. And the sooner we get that going, the better. Opponent might have a pump spell or a shock. A monorad so far. Lightning Strike deals with Scribe Gorger, sadly. Alright, so can play another one. Or at this point go Bristly Bill, Tapped Cottage, or Preacher would be good too. Although it doesn't guarantee Tortoise next turn. So, yeah, interesting spot. For now, maybe still want to develop my mana. Which we can do with a Scram Gorger. And then next turn I could double spell as well, instead of playing the Tortoise. A Reckless Handling. I have not seen this card in a while. Opponents searched up Orobrask's Forge. Found Nissa, Which I can play, play a land, still play Preacher to help double spell. And then get rid of one of their cards. Probably should have gone for Lightning Strike. And then next turn Tortoise is great with Nissa as well. So they are on Mono Red. And they really wanted an Urabrask's Forge. Should be safe enough to block if they Monstrous Rage. I guess I'll be a little bit sad. But then they've used a Monstrous Rage. Alright. Trade happens. And can play the Green Shell now. Since, uh... Yeah, I guess if Tortoise hits a land I can still play Bristly Bill, which would be alright. Yeah, maybe that's still preferable. Found Fabled Passage, that'll do. 
And then next turn we can enable landfall. Yeah, we did suspect our opponents maybe had a one mana instant in hand, so Monstrous Rage made sense. They could have still had a shock instead. Now Dragonhawk finds a lance. Can block safely. So we take two damage. And free strider the draw. Alright, so we have options. Tapping Scrap Gorger also helps us commit a crime. So let's maybe start here. And we hit a land. Name Turtle. Bristly Bill goes off. So we can grow with a tortoise maybe. Fetch. Play green shell. And maybe reveal another land if we're lucky. Get more landfall triggers. And this one could put on Tortoise again to cleanly attack past Dragonhawk, although trade would be fine. Um, can also start growing our Reach creature. But let's go for a counter on Tortoise and attack. Get back another land. Can make it Fabled Passage to enable Nissan next turn. And I guess we get another plus one counter, so maybe could have actually attacked since we would have been able to make a pair of five fives. Let's put it on the lookout now. But yeah, next turn they should be dead. Play green shell, have a decent chance of getting up to ten lands after tortoise attacks. And that'll pump the entire team. Opponent's probably not in a position to attack. Alright, so Demolition Fields. Play Green Shell, should pretty much ramp it up. Hit another Green Shell that I can play. Could also look into uh, activating some of my creature lands. Alright. Play green shell. And with three triggers should be able to hit a land. There we go. So now the team gets plus six plus six from triple green shell. And uh, yeah, that'll be good enough. I guess we'll have a look out of curiosity, see what the opponent's working with. Commit a crime, didn't find a land. Felden and another Reckless Handling. Alright, well, this was a nice showcase of the uh, green shell's power here. And Tordus can also find an extra land, so even if we didn't get there with triple green shell, we might have been able to uh, get there with Blossoming Tordus. Our opponent reading the green shell to figure out what just happened to them. And there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have some early removal, ways to commit crimes with a lookout, although we do need a third land. Yeah, I'll try it. And then start by fetching a forest. Put on black white, maybe a bats deck. Can play a scrap gorger, great way to enable the lookout as well. So hoping for a third land. Opponent's got the deep cavern bat. Well, they can maybe try and throw me off curve by taking the tortoise. And then I can still play a lookout but not commit a crime. Opponent takes a lookout and we found Fabled Passage, although this one's still tapped at the moment. So in that case, 
I can just cut down the deep cavern bait. And then I kind of have to fetch now. Can get my second green source. In case the uh, scrap quarter dies. And then pass a turn. Leaving something in their graveyard could be relevant, so we have something to commit a crime with. Our opponent knows they're running into removal here. And Augur. I don't mind cutting down. Since they do have some 3-3s three in the deck that may not die to cut down. Now, we can get rid of our cut down. Since we don't have a way of getting it back. And then, yeah, we have options. Look out, commit a crime, or just play Tortoise. It's fine too. And then we already have Fabled Passage as something we can get back. So we're getting guaranteed value. Alright, pass a turn. Scribe Gorger is also gonna turn into a threat soon. And we can potentially commit a crime both in our turn as well as the opponent's turn between Go for the Throats and Scribe Gorger, even have Demolition Field. Against bats, you sometimes want to target Caves of Koilos with your Demolition Field, since that's one way they can intentionally lose life to enable some of their synergies. Opponents got another Augur, this time with Offspring. So, once again, can go after my own graveyard, get rid of Cutdown. And then uh, can play the Lookout, attack with both Scrap Gorger and Tortoise if we want to. Or I might be better off just tapping Scrap Gorger to cast Preacher, which is probably fine. So I'm only enabling the Lookout once in this uh, turn cycle. And then they can draw with their Augur if they want to, although I guess I could start by attacking to discourage a double block. Find a cottage. And then play Preacher. Now exiling one of the opponent's things to commit a crime. And find another cottage, excellent. So we can also fire those up. Nothing on my side dies to cut down anymore. And there's the Caves of Koilos I mentioned, although Augur can also lose them life, so they don't really need it. Convocation can make a bat if they also gain life this turn. So we'll see if they can do that. A Reach creature is also good in this matchup. Alright, Deep Cavern Bat's a nice leftover. Take my known go for the throat. Although we might just be on the Restless Cottage plan now. Can always sag Demolition Field, also gets a discount from Tortoise, only one mana to activate. So we have options. And find another Demolition Field. So can start by just animating Restless Cottage. Times two perhaps, that also counts as committing a crime if we attack with it. I kind of wanted to play Demolition Field instead of tapping Scrap Gorger, but now it's too late. Alright, I guess we'll uh, go with it. But yeah, probably could have attacked with a Scrap Gorger if I just played the Demolition Field. That's alright. Attack all out. And then now target the opponent's Deep Cavern Bats. Commit a crime. And our opponent seems to have uh, had enough, so didn't get punished for not playing the Demolition Field. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have a Keepable Hand. Fine Lasher on one, Bat on two. Couple options on three. Opponent on lizards. Okay, let's uh, check out their hand, I think. In 
in the meantime, cut down answers bad, so that's probably the most straightforward pick. Or we can go for Gecko, which enables them to double spell. But uh, I think cut down still makes sense. So, no blocks. Although it's almost reasonable to force them to pump the Hired Claw instead of being able to do this. Alright, so next I imagine it's just Preacher as a decent blocker. And Bat can attack. So I need to hit my land drops since all my spells are quite expensive. If they drew removal for Preacher, I'll be sad. Go for the throat. Yeah, that also removes our card draw engine and our blocker. So that was a disaster. Fabled Passage isn't bad, at least. So we can grow the bats to gain some life back. these can attack. Back up to 15, and now land for a green shell would be awesome. One's gonna double mentor, or maybe mentor go to second main. Maybe they shouldn't have played a land yet. So yeah, can just take it, keep Bill around, which could be great with a green shell especially. Although... At the very least, I can use Demolition Field to get one extra Landfall Trigger. Found Cutdown. So I can Demolition Field to grow the Bat. Get my second Forest. And then am I in a position to attack? Since I could just hang back with my 4-4 four four as well. If I attack our opponent's dead next turn, so that may be worthwhile. And then cut down, can take care of a mentor. But I can wait and see what else they do. Because we don't want them finding an answer to the bat, so shutting down the card draw is most important. Alright, it's going to be Vine Lasher without offspring. Opponent goes to attackers. I'm kind of fine forcing them to pump the Hired Claw, because if they do. They wouldn't be able to go for the throat anymore. So take five, basically. And kind of hope they pump, but they're not going to. Take out a mentor. And then they're hoping for go for the throats. Which they did not find. So now Bat's lethal. Alright, GG's. So, kind of a scrappy win here, never getting to 5 mana. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. I think we've got a Keeper, hoping to find a third land, obviously. Can start by fetching for Forest. Although I won't be able to go for the Throat on 2. Unless I get a Swamp, so let's wait and see what our opponent does first. Turn 1 Swamp. And a Talent, so some sort of food-based deck. So I don't think Go for the Throat's a priority. I'll get my green sorted for my Turtles. And Lateral Wastes helps as well. 
So turn two, Scram Gorger. Hopefully turn three, Tortoise. Get back, Fabled Passage. Just a Rot Caller. That's fine. Okay, so play Tortoise. And then I guess I do have to exile something with a Scram Gorger. It's not optional. Luckily found another Fabled Passage. So yeah, that could have been a little awkward. And then try and get the green shell going, maybe before playing Preacher. So we get an extra trigger out of it, but Putin can answer the Tortoise. And Overseer can also be a card draw engine. Alright, could also take care of the opponent's creatures first. But uh, don't mind playing the green shell. And we found a cottage, perfect. Pass a turn. And now we've got Preacher to re-trigger Green Shell and a couple removal spells. Opponent leveling up their talent. And then end of turn. Don't really want to exile their card in case we want to commit a crime later. Could still do this, exile one of my cards, make it Tortoise maybe just to get an extra oil counter. Ooh, and another Preacher. So I can play two of them now. Triggering a green shell in the process. And find a Bristly Bill. So I can attack. Could also attack with a Scrap Gorger at this point. And uh, sure, I can still get rid of a Lanor Wastes or Tortoise. Because if I find a free strider, I need a card in their graveyard to target. Preachers can draw next turn, so I'm likely hitting my land drop for Bristly Bill. Put on just leveling up the talents. But uh, Scrap Gorger is also useful graveyard hate, so they never get to return anything too powerful. Green Shell down. And yeah, cut down's another answer, but uh, can start by attacking. Could even consider sending in the cottage, but I imagine I'll find some other cards I want to play. Like another tortoise. So can play Bristly Bill. And then play Tortoise. And then I could still cut down as well. Get back Fabled Passage. And plus one counter so we can spread out a bit. And then I don't think I'm in a hurry to cut down anything. Now, let's see. They have Menace, and then they get to make 1-1 one, one tokens. They still don't have a good attack. And our opponent's gonna bring back their one creature here. I think our opponent's given up. They do have two blockers, but we can activate Restless Cottage here. And that should pretty much seal the deal. Animate Cottage gets a discount. And we can clear a path with Go for the Throats. All right. So 
Sweet. Bunch of triggers on this tank. Opponent can sank a food to gain three. And we get another bristly build trigger as well. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hands got some decent removal, double preacher. Yeah, I'll try it. May have to fetch turn two to guarantee preacher on three. Opponent on an otter prowess deck. All right now we can uh, cut down the otter, but we'll wait and see what else they play. Yeah, mentor is a better target. Could have gotten punished because there is the uh, three mana draw two that gets a discount if they control an otter, but seemed unlikely to be their turn two play. And then I'll get a forest maybe. Since we need double green, so I don't take damage off Lanner Wastes. And this sounds not bad, but get Preacher going first. And then with a land, we can go Nissa, play a land, and go for the throat. Do we trade for a Lightning Strike or a Shock? Doesn't seem worthwhile. And a Rent's Resolve, that's fine. Find Land's Mentor. And Cut Down could answer a Mentor as well. But uh, can attack for now, make a token, and maybe just play another Preacher. Pretty good against Blue-Red when their removal deals 3 damage. If I now block with a lifelinker, I can make it so preachers can draw cards next turn. When my hand's a bunch of removal, however, it feels silly to block with preacher into a removal spell or a pump spell. So maybe I just force them to cast something and keep my preachers alive. Monstrous Rage makes sense. So Preachers make tokens once again, but that's fine. And then maybe just cut down the Mentor, play Scribe Gorger to develop my mana. And there's another Mentor. Scribe Gorger dies to Lightning. Good double block there, 2-2. Two, two. Force them to have another 1 mana instance. Which they didn't seem to have last turn. And another cut down. Alright, so if I attack I'm making tokens once again. And then I can cut down now, so we don't run into prowess problems. Keep up go for the throat. It's a bit of an awkward game, never hitting our land drops, but yeah, bunch of removal, double preacher. Seems to be doing the job. And there's the three mana draw to. Also a good reason to take out their altars before they get to untap. And now I finally get to draw with Preacher. Find Lookouts, land. So how about just uh, play a Lookout and a Tap land for now? Safer play might be to keep up Go for the Throat in case our opponent's about to storm off here. Sure. 
Shock takes out a 1-1. One -one. And our opponent explodes. So yeah, good old-fashioned mid-range beatdown. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We've got a keeper. Could use a third land. Especially now to maybe set up a turn three tortoise. Don't expect Scrap Gorger to survive. But it would be nice. Put on black whites and looks like a bat deck. All right, so I do want to still play the Scrap Gorger. Maybe next turn we can play Nissa and remove some creatures. Or still try and get the tortoise going as soon as possible. Augur can start drawing them cards. Can at least block the channeler for now. If they had taken damage of caves, they would have been able to fly over for two. But that's a choice they can make. So, yeah, Nissa. Play a land. Take out Augur might be the move. And then, uh, question is whether to cut down or go for the throat. They do have some 3-3s three in the deck that I may want to go for the throat later. So let's just cut down. And pass. Next turn, by playing Tortoise, I can maybe enable Landfall twice on Nissa to get my other turtle. Another channeler. And now they can fly over. Still no life gain synergies, it seems. Alright, Nissa down. So now my turn's not going to be quite as exciting. Could still get Tortoise going, but with no guarantee of a land. Or I can go Preacher, keep up Go for the Throats. Which I don't mind. And then we'll wait and see what else they play. Convocation. Still doesn't gain them life. Can pay two to draw a card, however. Yeah, I guess we'll deal with a channeler now. And uh, Augur can go. They do have ways to maybe recur creatures out of the graveyard with a legendary bat. So it is a good habit to exile those with Scrap Gorger. So Preacher still draws a card here. Opponent's gonna draw as well. And hit a land drop for a turn. Alright, so this turn can play Tortoise plus go for the throat, but let's see what Preacher draws first. Forest. We did mill a land. Okay, and then uh, keep up go for the throats once again. Next turn we can animate our Restless Cottage. And Gix is not going to draw them any cards here. Opponent flies a channeler, could have also drawn a card. Um, yeah, at this point maybe just take out Gix over the channeler. Since they don't seem to have any life gain synergies. Gotta be careful with the auto tapper if you wanna actively lose life to the caves. So now I can play the bat and still activate cottage. Could have also looked into demolition fields to have a land to return with Tortoise. Alright, opponent does have a cut down. Convocations, their last card. And then Animate Cottage. And Scrap Gorger can just attack and turn into a 3 3. Okay. No land to get back. Think we'll be fine. Opponents at one. 
and there's not much they can top deck to get out of this. Even a sweeper doesn't do it since we have a cottage. Alright, so we get to see our black-green landfall deck in action, and I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. The green shell definitely provides a lot of value, even if we don't get to the 10 lands to pump the team. Being an elemental for Nyssa feels quite intentional, and then it also plays well with our other engines that can put additional lands in play, like the Tortoise and the Lookout, which now has Vine Lasher as an other way to easily commit crimes without needing to spend additional mana. So yeah, overall the deck seems to be working quite well, we've got plenty of cheap removal to keep up with the aggro decks in the format, and I could even see adding a 25th or 26th land to the deck just to increase the hit rate on some of our abilities, although not entirely sure what to cut for those, but I'll uh, leave that as an assignment for you. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!